So let's talk about comics. Let's talk about the Magic Order. Let's talk about the future of comics. And let's talk about um, the most disgusting origin for any character that I've ever seen in any medium in any genre uh, ever. Um, so I did a video about the Magic Order last month, Magic Order issue one, and uh, not a lot of people watched it. It was an Instagram video, which meant it had to be filmed on my phone, which those videos tend to not do very well. I don't know if this one will do any better or not. Uh, hopefully it will because of the different format. But uh, I'm going to start in the middle to talk about it. Um, so the idea with the Magic Order is that it's written by Mark Millar. Mark Millar has written a lot of really big comics over the past, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, he wrote Civil War. He wrote Kick-Ass. He wrote Kingsman. He wrote Wanted. Uh, a lot of comics that have been turned into movies. And one of the things that uh, Mark Millar is on about is that he really doesn't like the current comic industry. And uh, so he's trying to make comics that are specifically designed to not only have uh, a different kind of appeal than the normal superhero comics, but are designed also from the ground up to basically be movies. Uh, I mean, with Wanted, uh, artist J.G. Jones uh, literally used celebrities as references and was pretty shameless about it. Like, it's pretty obvious that the, the main character was based on Eminem and that the, the Fox character was based on Halle Berry and other things like that. Um, and with this one, it's even a little bit more blatant. So you've got Mark Millar, one of, you know, maybe the best, or at least one of the most impactful writers of the last 30 years, and you've got really, really good artist, Olivier Coipel, and you have Mark Millar. Mark Millar has his own company called Miller World, and Miller World was recently bought by Netflix. And so he's now publishing comics specifically to be turned into Netflix series. And you can see that a lot in the way that these comics are made. It's like you have people just sitting around in fairly mundane locations in wearing plain clothes just talking about these pretty fantastic things. You know, something that could very easily be uh, filmed. You basically got a script for the comic that's essentially a screenplay treatment and you basically got uh, one of the best artists in the industry effectively doing a storyboard for a TV show. Uh, I don't know if Pella was necessarily complaining about it. Uh, I would imagine that being in the Miller World imprint, being bought out by Netflix, uh, being you know an image imprint, I would imagine that for an indie artist not in the big two, that that's probably about as good a pay as you're going to get. <laughs> so I don't know if he's really complaining about it, but it's still kind of unfortunate to see that this is most likely the direction that the industry is going in, and it... it uh... <laughs> A lot of the things at Marvel, too, it just seems like it's designed to basically workshop ideas that are going to be turned into movie characters later on. And it's really unfortunate It's like that this could be uh, the future of comics. Um, however, just because uh, Miller World and is effectively functioning as an IP mill now, uh, that doesn't mean that the story has to be bad. So what is the story like in this comic? So the idea is that there is this ancient... Um, well, it says it on the title, the Magic Order that basically protects the mortal mundane realm against these extra-dimensional threats and internal magical threats from wizards who want to take over the world. So uh, so the big thing there is, and, you know, what makes any story? Well, what makes a lot of the story, in any case, is characters. So let's take a look at one of the characters, the character that's sort of the main focus of this particular issue. And it's this, this one right here, um, the female here, here, here. Uh, so this character is not Zatanna, <laughs> um, just because she has blue eyes, which aren't evident here, but she's blue eyes and dark hair, and she's been shown a lot of times wearing a white top and black pants, and she is the, a stage magician who's also a real magician, and she's the daughter of this patriarchal figure who's also a stage magician who's a real magician, and he's like the leader of this whole thing, um, just because... She has all these things. I mean, that doesn't mean that she's just an edgelord version of Zatanna. That doesn't mean that the rest of the Magic Order is consisting of basically edgelord versions of, of DC and Marvel Mystic characters. That's Why would you get that idea? Just because that's literally what Wanted was. <laughs> Wherever would you get that idea? Somebody was pointing out that in, the, in a lot of Mark Millar comics that uh, every character is a jerk. Mark Millar himself is known for not being especially nice. <laughs> um, there are times when he can be really cool. Like, you look at him on social media, at least on Twitter, nowadays, he's actually not that bad. But in the past, he's been very open about his contempt for not only superhero comics, but superhero comics fans and just the whole industry in general. Um, he, he really doesn't try to hide that. So 
it, the fact that every character is either a, a jerk or a sociopath or an addict or some combination of the three. It wouldn't surprise me if this is how Mark Millar, not how he is all the time necessarily, but how he kind of, uh, what he thinks is like cool. And the, and the fact that just like, just every story that he does is like that. It's about jackasses and assholes coming together to do a thing that might be good. But... So all that being said, what is the most disgusting origin for a character that you could possibly think of? This issue, like I said, kind of focuses on this character, Cordelia, the daughter of the leader of this order. So now we're starting to get a little bit more into how, what you know, the background of each character. We get in. So what is, what is the most disgusting origin for a character like that? That you could possibly think of. Keep in mind, she's not just simply a stage magician. She is specifically an escapologist. She's somebody like Harry Houdini. She gets out of, you know, seemingly impossible things, um, seemingly using a combination of both magic and practical skills. So, given all that I've just said about everybody being jerks and about everybody being, uh, and about her being an escapologist, what is the most disgusting origin for that character that you could possibly think of? Did you say that? She escaped her own abortion when she was in the womb from her own uh, father having ordered it. Uh, did you, uh, is that what you were thinking? I don't know why you were thinking that, but uh, but you would be right. Um, her father had an affair with this uh, black woman here, and he told her to have an abortion. And in the middle of the abortion, uh, little Fetus Cordelia here escaped with the placenta and everything, and took up residence in another woman, and a surrogate woman, and uh, who gave birth to her, and her father realized that you know, even though he wanted to abort her, even though it's going to mean probably the end of his marriage and a significant loss of respect, uh, he has to keep Cordelia around just simply because of her sheer power. So Cordelia spends her entire life both rebelling against her father and also trying to gain his approval, so she's constantly working on escapology, um, with public displays of her abilities, and but, and she's an addict, and she's a drunk, and she's got all these personality problems, but she still also kind of seeks his approval um, because of her feeling unwanted. She's approaching 30, and she's still a mess, and she explains all this while she is drunk and performing at a child's birthday party. So, yeah. Escaping her own mother's Womb. And of course it's shown in, in detail here. Of course you see little baby Cordelia getting out of there. Uh, and what's weird is that like... So Mark Millar, I mean, he's a, a UK, you know, far left winger type. Like a lot of people that came from the UK in, in like the late 80s through the, the 90s. Grant Morrison, Warren Ellis, Garth Ennis, a, a lot of other writers. They were all the same, kind of cut from the same cloth, cut from the same mold. They were all very left wing they were all going for this sort of shock value uh, hyper violence kind of uh, aesthetic um and uh i thought mark millar for whatever reason i kind of thought he was past that kind of shock value tactic thing but evidently not <laughs> um but uh what's weird about mark millar is that he's actually like he'll do things that are like weirdly conservative because like a lot of those left wing uk socialist types um, they really haven't changed much in 30 years, at least in terms of politics, at least in terms of the kind of stories they want to tell. I mean, look at Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison was writing about, like, the virtues of, like, socialism and animal rights and things like that in the late 80s, and he's still writing about that nowadays. Uh, I mean, when he's writing well, he's one of the best writers in the industry, so you can't really say it's a bad thing, but it's like, you know, in 30 years, a lot of people change their politics, and the best of my knowledge, people like Warren Ellis and Grant Morrison and Garth Ennis, those guys really haven't that much. Then you see somebody like Mark Millar, who's written some really pretty offensive things over the years, and it's like, even as like disgusting as this is, it is also this like weirdly pro-life sort of thing. I don't know if he intended that or not, but I mean, he's showing that the baby, that the fetus in the womb still has like basic survival instincts, even if they're not, you know, fully formed yet, which is one of the things that people in the, the pro-life movement like to say. So I, I kind of... I don't really know exactly. I, he could have just thought that this was like the most shock value thing that he could have come up with. I mean, it's literally in the freaking first word bubble, the first panel, the first page that she says this. So I don't know if it's just that or if it's that he does actually have this like sort of weird 
maybe not like politically conservative, but like basically conservative sort of worldview. I don't, it's, it's, I don't really know what he's going for here. Um, and here, once again, this is Cordelia not looking anything like Zatanna and her father, Moonstone, not looking anything like Zatara. It, that's completely not the case. I don't know why you would think that. So yeah, um, whatever he was actually going for, <laughs> uh, easily the most gross and disgusting origin for a character that I've ever seen, the most disgusting opening of any comic that I've ever read. Uh, I kind of wonder if Mark Millard set a challenge for himself where he was trying to do that explicitly. Uh, and uh, so if that's what he's trying to go for, I guess, good job, I guess. You achieved it. So the actual story here is that they're trying to... There's this woman, I don't remember her name. She's like the kind of like bad guys, I guess, who wants to take over the world. And she's using this dude here in the mask with the tricorner hat to help her. I don't really know what their plan is. Uh, I don't really know exactly why they're doing it because a lot of the characters still really aren't fleshed out yet. Like, they kill this old black lady here by drowning her inside of a taxi cab. And, uh, why did they kill her? Uh, I don't know. They didn't really explain why this person was important. He kills this dude here, this fat dude, uh, by dragging him into a mirror. Why? I'm not really sure because they didn't explain why he was important. The comic opened with, or the first issue rather, opened with them killing somebody by having their own uh, child stab them in their sleep by, you know, taking over the kid's mind. And all we know is that the lady in the mask here is evil, or at least seemingly evil, and the dude in the white mask is helping her. And that's all we know. And uh, so a lot of characters that uh, <laughs> are just introduced and killed off within the same issue. I mean, that's what, the, that's what the cover of this is about. So my main interest in this comic, it's more like this could be the future of the medium. Um, it's not necessarily a good thing. In fact, it's probably not an overall good thing. I mean, here you've got two really good creators, Mark Millar and Olivia Coipel, creating a story that, like I said, it's basically a screenplay treatment mixed with a storyboard. They're just really high-quality screenplay treatments and storyboards. But it's been sort of the danger for a while now that mainstream comics would just simply become an IP mill for other media. And uh, the fact that you're basically giving into that with Netflix... Sort of unfortunate. Um, so I kind of want to stick with the story itself. I, but it's like the each issue so far has just been, um, like I said, going for like shocking things. The, the first issue opening with the kid killing his own father. The second issue opening with her talking about escaping around abortion. This is the cover for the next issue. The lady in the mask in some kind of orgy with herself. It's like, so I, I don't, I don't know how much this is going to go, so I can't really uh, say for sure what exactly she wants or what exactly the, the the Magic Order, which is kind of a dumb name, by the way, just, <laughs> just so you know. But it's like, what exactly are they trying to protect? Or what are they trying to do exactly? How does she threaten them? It's sort of explained and hinted at throughout the story, but it's not terribly well explained. So it's getting harder and harder to uh, stick with it. So yeah, uh, in any case, tell me what you think. Tell me if you're reading this. Tell me if you if you think that uh, this is where comics are going, for better or worse. Like, comment, subscribe. In any case, this is Andre Chevron signing off.